This week, we take you to the amazing crater lake of Laguna Kilatoa, and afterwards to the second highest mountain in Ecuador, Cotopaxi Volcano. On our way to Quito, we take a look at an animal market in Sacasili. In Latacunga, we turn off the Pan American Highway and head into the high mountains towards the famous Laguna Kilatoa. It's a beautiful drive on a very windy road with great views into the many valleys. We even get to see Cotopaxi. Just before we get to Sumbahua, the turn off to Laguna Kilatoa, the road is blocked by another local procession. The viewpoint at Canyon Rio Toachi is a great place for our coffee break. The canyon is the product of pyroclastic flows from the eruption of the Kilatoa volcano and is more than 100 metres deep. The last Kilatoa eruption occurred around 1280 and was one of the largest volcanic eruptions in the past 1,000 years. However, geological excavations at the site suggest that the canyon itself is around 1,800 years old meaning that it was formed by a previous eruption. We arrive at Laguna Kilatoa around 4pm and put our hiking boots on straight away to go for a walk around the rim of this spectacular volcano. This is quite spectacular. We're at 3,900 metres and the sun's shining. How's that going for us? Perfect, huh? The three kilometre or two mile wide caldera was formed by the collapse of the volcano following a catastrophic eruption about 600 years ago. Mirador de Torre con Don Juan. This is really spectacular. We're going down a little now, but we have to watch the time because it's getting dark in an hour. This is really, really spectacular here. We're the only ones out and about. I hope we're going to get a nice sunset too. This is the lookout here. This is excellent. You can either go underneath or you can go on top. Helen, of course, goes at the top. She's not afraid of heights. I'm going to follow her. It's a good job there's a glass wall here because I'm carefully going forward. We're right on the edge. Well, it's, it's probably about a 10 meter drop. It's absolutely amazing what kind of plants grow in 4,000 meter altitude. Isn't that beautiful? The crater lake is 250 metres or 820 feet deep and located at 3,500 metres above sea level. The caldera rim is highly irregular and reaches its maximum elevation at 3,915 metres. The 10 kilometre hike around the rim is sandy and steep in places and can be quite taxing. The clouds are definitely coming in. You gotta watch it here. Yeah, sun's going down, but it's raining now, and we get a little bit of a rainbow. It's not really strong enough, but still spectacular. We're up at 4,000 meters, and these guys are playing volleyball with a football over a super high net. I can't believe it. 
We wouldn't have. getting freezing cold here. Oh. Nice hat. Beautiful hat. <laughs> didn't you just say something that you didn't want to repeat for the camera? <laughs> Hot flush. <laughs> bit louder please, I don't think the camera got that. <laughs> Me. Uh, mm. Got all my... We were just talking oh, about making hot water please. bottles and going to bed early. Yeah. No, I don't need them. <laughs> the, the hat looks really good on you. We got three st three things for thirteen dollars, and uh, I'm going to put mine on as well in bed. You look so sweet with it. Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. If it if it would be red. Jingle bell, jingle bell. <laughs> this is red. Yeah. Bluey bells. Bluey <laughs> bells. <laughs> Louis oh, oh, what fun, fun it is to ride. On one horse open sleigh. Hey! <laughs> this is all we can sing in Christmas songs. It's a little late for that, but never mind. Yeah, well, it's January the 6th, which means all the Christmas trees have to come down mm -hmm. by today. That's why we're putting ours up. Hence, Helen has the hat on. Because <laughs> we're always late with these things. Because it's cold. What are we up at? We're up at about 4,000 metres. I think so, yeah. That's high. Yeah, it's yep. it says 20 degrees on our thermometer. Hang on, I show you. Mm -hmm. But it feels like six. Mm. No, no not quite yet. It. And it's checking the outside temperature now. It is 10.4. 10.4, and it probably goes down to six, and it's raining well, out there. No, it might go lower. Mm. It might go down to three or four. We see. Because we're high up. So, yeah, and it's raining. Oh. Yeah, hopefully it's not snowing. It could well be. Nah, it's not below freezing. Yeah, yeah. Are you looking smoking? Or... What a beautiful sunny morning. The colour of the Laguna Kilotoa is simply amazing. Left Kilotoa, and we're heading towards Cotopaxi. We're doing the ring road. It's all tarmac, apparently, yeah, but we're going a lot lower. We're going back down to the Panam, and our next stop is Cotopaxi. But it's supposed to be a beautiful drive this side of the uh, Laguna Kilotoa. Tarmac Road. This part is completely gone here. That shows you that we're in fragile country here. You never know what's happening in the mountains. There could be a landslide at any time. We are going down these really, really steep switchbacks down to a river and then it looks like one big switchback up the other side but um, we're fed and watered so anything can come now well <laughs> we see oh yeah these are really really short switch it's amazing what they uh, actually um, put into the mountains here yeah and it wants me to show you the GPS which is... there you go we're halfway through the switchbacks down by the river now, and now we're going back up the other side. This is quite a road here, it reminds us of the Ruta 9 in, in Salta, north of Salta. That was very narrow, that, that was like two bicycle tracks. Um, this one is a little wider, but still, you really have to pay attention here. It's a brand new road though, you can see by the markings. Our map actually shows it still as a gravel road, 
so maybe we are lucky that we get it in this kind of condition. We are going up meter by meter. We're over 3,000 meters again. It was like 2-4 down by the river. And as you can see, we are just below the clouds. This road is getting a little adventurous here. In some stretch, it, it's uh, just a one lane. And we just had a bus passing us coming the other way. And thank God, both of us, uh, we were meeting in the bend, in one of those switchbacks bend, and we had enough space to get past each other. Poor Vinny too, he's got to work hard here to get us up the hill. But uh, it's only about 36 kilometers back down to the Panamericana. I we had to wait all day, but now come to Paxi, it's free of cloud. The park not far away on a soccer field. Cotopaxi is one of the most active volcanoes in the Andes Mountains. It is the second highest summit in Ecuador, reaching a height of 5,897 metres or 19,347 feet. It has also one of the few equatorial glaciers in the world, which starts at the height of 5,000 metres or 16,400 feet. Since 1738, Cotopaxi has erupted more than 50 times, resulting in the creation of numerous valleys formed by mud flows around the volcano. The previous eruption lasted from August 2015 to January 2016. We decided to take a day off. Time to do some work on our website and to cut our hair. You can climb Cotopaxi, but like Chimborazo, it's often covered in clouds so we didn't bother taking a closer drive up the volcano. Every Thursday morning, there is a famous animal market in Sakisili. Local people are selling cows, llamas, alpacas, sheep, goats, pigs and piglets. It starts really early, but by the time we get there, it's already winding down. It's a super windy day and dust is flying around everywhere. I didn't even bother leaving the motorhome while Kirsten walks over to take some photos and videos. It's not really a market to watch for the faint-hearted. The locals push, kick and drag the animals to their vehicles and the loud screams of the pigs make you really want to become a vegetarian. This is really, really steep. <laughs> in our next video, we take you to Quito, the most beautiful town in Ecuador. We also get some repairs done on Vinny too. We're in Quito in the garage to get our front axle noise checked out.